Well, today we got another electronic throttle body issue, and this one happens to be happening on a 06 F350. It has the 5.4 liter uh, three valve in it, and in 04 on the F150s, this is the first year Ford started delving into the drive-by wire electronic throttle body systems, and then they fanned it out from there to different models. The customer's concern on this one was low power and they did have a check engine light on and the low power concern is caused by the system seeing a fault in the TP sensor now it has two TP sensors within the same housing and they read off of each other and they should mirror each other one's high one's low one's low one's high anytime it sees any you know variance to that it will put it in the limited power mode or they can also go into an idle only mode in severe cases. Now this one only went to limited power. It'll force it and that's there's not a runaway condition. And that's a condition code. It's nothing to worry about. It's just telling you what's happening. The fault code is this one. And this is the absolute most common. And that's those two sensors within that housing not jiving basically. The one good thing about these electronic throttle body systems is because they are monitored so closely for faults that they will throw a code faster than not. By the time you feel it and it goes in that low power mode it will have already thrown a code. The biggest thing it throws is a wrench light. Whenever there's a wrench light there's a powertrain concern on uh, the older ones, like a 04 to 06 uh, model year, the wrench light exclusively means there's a throttle body system uh, fault. Now one of the great uh, symptoms of this type of failure is that the throttle body will, while you're driving or while you got the key on only, it'll continually cycle back and forth, back and forth, all erratic and I'm going to put you in the engine compartment so you can listen to it while I turn the key on and that's one of the biggest telltales that you have a uh, bad electronic throttle body I'm going to put you down over here so you can listen how a good throttle body um, sounds when it key is first turned on and everything cycled it'll cycle normally full open full close it won't keep doing it like earlier so I'll let you listen all right so we're going to take off the electronic throttle body it's deep down in here behind the little air box right here and first thing we need to do is pull the air intake snorkel off they vary in design but either way they snap into the air box and then be one bolt or a nut holding it in place and then either go into the fender or in this case the front radiator grill area Could pull that off this one's a little bit more complex line here. F-150s don't have to deal with this. Get this out of the way. There we go. And then you just yank and it'll pop out of there. Like that. Now before we get too far, let's blow off this area as best we can to prevent any uh, foreign stuff going down into the engine. we can do with air should be safer that way mass airflow sensor connector right here is a red tab on it pop it back and then you can press the black clip on here and then release it there's a vent line over here 
that clips into the housing on this side. Might as well take that all the way off. Get it out of here. Then we got four 10 millimeter bolts, studs, whatever you want to call them. Like this one right here. At all four corners. And you're going to need a deep well for these guys. And then this whole thing just pulls off of here. It's a little tighter on the Super Duties, which is kind of weird. And then we got the electronic throttle body right here. This one also you're going to need a 10 millimeter deep well to get on the back side too. So you might as well keep it on your ratchet. Pull the TP sensor connector right here. Same thing, it's got a lock on it. You can see the lock. You bring it up and then you can get access to that black tang underneath it. Get that out of there. There's also a connector on this side for the motor, but that one's really hard to get to, so wait until we pull these bolts and we get this out of here to uh, undo that so you don't break it. Here's that connector I was talking about. It's very hard to get to on the back side it faces the intake here. And then the whole thing will just come off as an assembly. Alright, going back together, clean the area here. Put our new gasket in here. Now we'll put the new throttle body in. Now do this connector. Now so we can uh, get it fully connected and locked in before we can get access to it. Just put all four bolts in by hand. And then we're going to tighten down to 80 inch pounds. And then they want another quarter turn on them after that. Torque them down. And then after that, you can do your quarter turn after that. Get the TP sensor connected in. Put the tab snaps on there. Put our locker down on there. Now we can just put our air box back on. Same thing, it slips right on. And then I like to wiggle it on and press down the back back here where it actually seats on there before I start bolting these bolts in. Before we go any further, let's connect the mass airflow sensor until it locks. And then we're going to put this ventilation tube back on. Oh, clips. And then same thing with the port right here. And then the TP sensor clips to it. Just retains to it. You'll see it. Now, just start putting these bolts in, and they'll do a self-align type deal. When they're centered in there, once you get all four of them in, and these ones I just tighten down until they're snug. Now these ones I do the rear first, so it seats down on that throttle body, and then I do the, I get them snug, and then I start doing the cross tightening. Get your air snorkel back on. Nice and snug, and at F 150s and 250s, we're going to have that nut right here. We're going to have the 
ventilation hose with a B gas bottle. Make sure your cap's tightened back up. Since we released it earlier for the pressure in the system. Okay. Now clearing the memory on the PCM is one of the most critical parts of this repair. It has to erase all those bad values for the old throttle body and of course clear the codes. Uh, I have a scan tool that will clear memory. Uh, what I have for you is a whole video on how to properly clear the memory in your PCM so that it relearns all fresh values and so that you just don't clear the codes. So you do a fresh relearn of all the idle trims on the new throttle body. After you reset the cam, we're going to turn the key on and let it do its cycling of the throttle body to learn the endpoints. Then you can start it. Once you get it started, let it idle like this for a while until it gets to operating temperature with no accessories on, no headlights, no HVAC, no radio, nothing. Once it gets to operating temperature, let it idle for another 5 to 10 minutes and then it will fully learn the idle trim on this particular new throttle body. Now this self calibration procedure is very important because not only does it learn the idle trim so it has the right idle under load and um, at idle with no load, it's also very important while you're driving for the actual angle of that throttle plate and for when you do decels. So if you step on it, you go to pass a car, and then you let off, the plate needs to not fully close. It has to go back to a certain trim angle. That trim angle needs to be precise, else you may get a severe RPM dip and all kinds of other issues. Hesitation upon takeoff, um, all kinds of issues like that. So it's very important to let it learn.